Good morning, and we are live. How exciting. Uh, just give everybody a couple of moments to catch up with us this morning so that we can be together to go through this topic. This is going to be a special one. So make sure you have a, I have my healthy shake this morning. So excited about that. Make sure you have some, some fluid, paper, and a pen to take some notes because we're going to dive into a really critical topic this morning and hopefully bring some clarity to our discussion from last week. I made a pretty emphatic statement last week. Last week, I, I said that we can't really set any resolutions for 2021. <clears throat> we won't be able to set goals and accomplish them. We won't be able to identify dreams and create them if we're not doing it from I am. And I am is when I step back and I reflect on my own thinking. I reflect on my own life. I'm making decisions. And often we reflect, as I mentioned last week, on this piece, what we're changing. We want to put a mirror up here just for a moment because that's I am. That's my real, authentic, true self. Now, Dr. Hartman, I mentioned this last week. Dr. Hartman, who did the math for the Habit Finder Assessment, said the objective, what the objective of what? Life, self-improvement, is to be real and genuine and authentic, to be real, to be comfortable in conversation, to be genuine, to bring your genius fully to the service of another person so you don't rob yourself or them, and to be authentic, anthos hectic, our true self. And then he said this, without the need to impress or pretend or feel ashamed or fear. The most difficult task in our mortal existence and the highest level of maturity. Now, when we get into this discussion of I am, we start to ask questions like, well, am I being selfish? Am I being self-centric, self-focused? We want to go back and take a look at those four tethers for a moment. The first one being impress. Am I trying to impress? Because impress suggests that there might be a hole, H-O-L-E. That's a key word to write down this morning, H-O-L-E, a hole in my soul that needs to be filled. And so I'm focusing on me trying to impress others about something I'm doing or something I have because there is a hole in my soul. Now, I want to emphasize, this doesn't mean you can't have nice things. I have nice things. But we don't have them to impress other people. In fact, someone drove by our home, a beautiful home overlooking a lake and a ski resort. It's wonderful. But it's just filled with beautiful, mature pine trees. You can't even see the house. You have to walk over the bridge that goes over the landscaping in the front yard to all of a sudden, step into the house and go, oh, there is a house here. Yeah. I have a really fun sports car. It's parked in the garage down below. I don't drive it anywhere very public, like to church or something on Sunday. It's, it's something I have to feed my soul. It's a fun thing. It's paid for. It's a toy. We can have these things in our lives but not for the purpose of impressing someone, because that suggests there is a hole, H-O-L-E, in our soul. Pretend, another big tether. Pretend says I try to make something small look bigger than it actually is in an attempt to impress. Isn't that interesting? So I pretend to impress. Another hole in my soul. Something's missing in me. Shame. Shame is not, I feel bad about what I did. It's about, I feel bad about who I am. And that can be in terms of my body type, my habits, uh, my income, my savings account, the level of my debt. It could be a lack of education. It could be all kinds of things that make me feel ashamed, ashamed, feel shame. Shame comes from the root word sham, which is a covering. It's like putting a, 
a cold, wet blanket on that flame that burns inside my soul that Og talks about. So we want to be careful to guard against that because that suggests there's a hole in my soul and the shame will drive and press and pretend. Fear, false evidence appearing real. This isn't a rattlesnake kind of fear. This is fear that I'm not enough, fear that I'm not good enough, fear that I'm not capable enough, fear that somebody's going to find out about all of these things. That's the most interesting thing in assessment debriefs on the habit finder that people are uncomfortable exposing habits of thinking because they don't want to be found out. I think that's a common human challenge. <clears throat> that's a very deep rooted fear that when we have impress and pretend and shame and fear, we have a hole in our soul. I am is whole, W H O L E, whole. That's a different kind of hole, isn't it? So we either have a hole in our soul we're trying to fill, or we are whole. Now we don't become whole by trying to fill the hole in our soul because you'll never do that. <clears throat> How do we become? H to me, W H O L E. That's really the discussion. Because as we become W H O L E, we are not preoccupied with us. How do I look? How do people feel about me? Do they like me? I want to be liked. I don't want to offend. Can you feel all the H O L E's coming out? All of a sudden, I'm whole, W-H-O-L-E, and I'm no longer preoccupied. I am totally available. We've all heard this, love thy neighbor as thyself. Great advice for anyone in any belief system. But if we're going to love our neighbor, we must be W-H-O-L-E, whole, to fully love our neighbor. Otherwise, we are not available. When we're with someone, we're thinking about how are they going to perceive me? What happens if they don't like me? And all of that dialogue about questioning our worth and our worthiness, or our ability, or our appearance, or our character, or the value of our contribution, or past mistakes we've made in our lives. All of that dialogue robs us and them from really hearing them. And we know that one of the great secrets for filling that H-O-L-E in our soul is truly hearing another person, being so present with them, so available, that we get intuitive impressions about empathetic questions that we could ask. If we're thinking about us, they don't come. We're totally open because we're totally available. That impression comes and we ask the question and we create a safe place and their wall of resistance comes down and their cooperation and their energy floods out to us. Guess what that does? That begins to fill the hole in our soul. You can't own enough Ferraris to do that. What happen? You can't buy enough jewelry. You can't have a big enough house. You can't make enough money to do that simple thing. But being available and sometimes we still have noise, right? So we just shut it off. I'm going to consciously just shut off that noise. I'm going to totally be present with this person and really listen until they feel understood, which means to feel safe. When they're safe, the wall comes down and the energy and the cooperation flood out. And that helps fill any holes in my soul. That's one. Two, <laughs> oh, entrepreneurs, you have busy minds, very visual. 
very visual minds and very obsessive minds, constantly obsessively thinking. And in that space, we get these creative ideas. And then our unhealthy habits of thinking talk us out of them. We see a vision of a possibility. What we could do to start a new business or drive an existing business or serve a person. And then we talk ourselves out of it. Or we use the gift destructively. Why? Because there's a H-O-L-E in our soul. We use it to escape our current life and go to the future so we can feel that norepinephrine surge, that very powerful drug that makes us feel euphoric. Or if we're fear-based, we may go into catastrophizing, worrying. And it's very discouraging when we're in that space. Can you feel this? We're going to want to know how to use this gifting to get inspired ideas and intuitive impressions and creative solutions. Because when we do, if you're wired to a functional MRI, we see a gamma spike, whew, ignites our passion, drives our action. And when we act on an inspired idea, and it turns out to be inspired, we feel connected to something bigger than ourselves. And guess what that does? That begins to fill the hole in our soul. You have the gifting. Now, entrepreneurs with connection with people, 88% of you have enormous abilities to have empathy. You're not accessing it. You want to know how to do this. 97% of you have very vivid visualization and effortless thinking. But 98% of you, statistically, are using it destructively to fantasize, catastrophize. Instead of using it constructively to get that inspired idea that ignites your passion, drives the action, and validates the inspiration. We're going to want to do this. It's an enormous gifting. That way, we can begin to fill the H-O-L-E in our soul and start to become more whole, W-H-O-L-E. And third, entrepreneurs historically have very accurate thought processes in terms of knowing what needs to be done and how to do it. But Dave, why am I always confused? Why am I always procrastinating. Again, the toxic dialogue. Because you know that when you shut that off and you jump in and do it, wow, that wasn't so hard. Why did I wait so long? Well, of course, you just unleashed your natural genius. You choose to live present in the now. Getting inspired ideas about people and moving your current circumstances forward a millimeter and celebrating, getting an inspired idea about people, moving your circumstances forward a millimeter and celebrating, continued, the more time you spend with your real true self, your natural genius, that's being genuine, one of the objectives, you begin to fill the H-O-L-E in your soul, and you become more W-H-O-L-E. That's how we get there. There is a challenge because connecting with people, we have the dialogue. We have to consciously shut it down. Og says, I will say silent to myself, I love you. Let wrinkle my brow, bring a smile to my lips and echo in my voice could be really present. And who is there who will not buy my goods when his heart feels my love? We're going to do everything to be there because when his heart feels my love, his wall comes down or her wall comes down. Energy and cooperation flood out and fill the H-O-L-E in my soul. 
I get an inspired idea about how to serve more effectively, it ignites my passion, drives my action, and validates the inspiration. I feel connected, fills the H-O-L-E in my soul, and I feel more W-H-O-L-E. I live present in the now. This is the hardest thing for the entrepreneur to do because we love being in our minds. It's exciting to be there. Oh my goodness, we keep thinking of ideas and more ideas and our mind is so vivid and effortless that we actually think it's done. And then we come into tangible reality and it's like, oh my goodness, it's just we're impatient and frustrated because it takes so long. Well, yeah, in comparison to the mind, but this is where it actually happens. If we choose to live here and intentionally go into our mind to get that idea, bring it back and apply it and create and celebrate, then we get to spend time with our natural genius. Imagine if we focused on these three areas, any one of those selfish? Not at all. Totally focused on serving another person. Totally focused on getting inspired ideas about how to do so even more effectively. Living in my natural genius, honoring the gifting I've been given. Can you think of anything greater to do to fill the H-O-L-E in your soul? That's not being self-centric. Now, there's one last piece this morning. It's very sensitive to me right now. I have 14, 15 hour days are the routine. They always have been. I've never thought about life differently. This last year, a couple of health challenges, a little brush with death. <laughs> yeah, some residual of that hanging out. And I'm going, yes, one of the other dangers is that sometimes we sacrifice ourself, our time, our energy, and even our well-being to serve other people. Sometimes, because we're trying to prove we're okay, that dialogue about our worth and worthiness, our ability and our character and our value of our contribution, all that dialogue, we are sacrificing us to prove that dialogue isn't correct. It's not a healthy balance. We can also just give and give and give and not take care of ourselves. It is important that we focus on good nutrition, exercise, sleep, and feeding our mind and soul with good literature, good books. Now, I've done the last. I'm eating much better. I have for a few years. Exercising. A beautiful gym. It goes unused sometimes. Mm, shame on you, Dave. Sleep. Doing better. But my body's right now paying the price for not having done the eating, exercise, and sleeping on a regular basis. Don't sacrifice your time, energy, and well-being at the expense of the service. It's a balance. Being W-H-O-L-E is building into your schedule self-care. It is the proverbial put on your oxygen mask first so that you can continue to put an oxygen mask on another person. Because if you don't, you could suffocate. And then what happens? You're not available. So I hope this morning I've given you some ideas to consider. I shared with you, you can have nice things. Just don't have them to impress or pretend. People, inspired ideas, being present in the now and making sure you take care of yourself physically, emotionally, and mentally. Then we can become whole, W-H-O-L, eventually complete, 
whole and complete. What a beautiful place to come from, because then we can be totally present. Now you can shut off the dialogue and be totally present. But if you start to lose your health, the energy to do so starts to wane. So let's make sure we take care of these pieces so that we can be W-H-O-L-E, whole and complete and available and can continue to bless people's lives. Because truly, the joy in life comes when we lift and build a human being. There's just a special connection when we do so. I hope this will help lift and build you this morning. I am coming from this place. Okay, now I'm looking at I am. And I'm going, how am I doing? Am I dragging too much negative dialogue with me? What can I do to address that? Don't focus on the dialogue. Focus on the three areas I shared. Connection, using your mind constructively, being present in the now, and the dialogue will be revealed for what it is, a lie. And make sure you take care of your body and your mind and your soul. Thanks, everybody. Blessings to you. Let's have a great week living in I am. Because of that dialogue, we won't be able to stay here all the time, but get here sooner, stay here longer in this consciousness of who you are and who you want to bless. And if you drift, you know how to get back. Focus on serving, using your mind constructively, being present in the now and taking care of you. And you can get back sooner and then stay here longer. Thanks, everyone.